20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did. So throw off the bowlines, sail away from the harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, and discover your life. Mark Twain. Welcome to this week's episode on the Phoenix Rising Podcast. I am Ashley Drummond. Hello, waving you guys if you are watching on YouTube. Welcome to today's podcast episode. We are going to get into some science behind blood sugar. And we're talking about this because like it's obviously a lot of things are missed in nutrition, but it's one of the bigger things that are missing, not just nutrition, but overall health. Our blood sugar affects our ability to lose weight our ability to maintain steady energy throughout the day. It also affects our hormone balance, our cortisol and stress levels, exercise performance, sleep, everything. So we're going to get into this today just because I had a experience with one of my clients where they were having issues with weight and we did some of their labs and their blood work. And what came back was their fasting insulin and glucose levels were high. And I'm going to explain to you why this is important to know when it comes to weight loss, but also just your overall health and wellness. So welcome to this episode. I'm super happy that you are here and to dive in and talk about all this. A lot of the reasons too is because some of this stuff, like had I known this, it's the whole like, I wish that I knew then what I know now. Had I had known this like in my early 20s or even like just when I was an athlete, like playing sports. This would have been so helpful if I knew what I needed to do to keep steady energy levels, especially in my workout, so that I wasn't like feeling super great in the beginning and then crashing towards the end. Um, but also with mood, like we'll get into some of the symptoms of like high blood sugar and low blood sugar, but like feeling jittery and anxious and like weak and confused and like I can't think. Nobody ever explained to me blood sugar imbalances can do that. So I'm going to share all that with you, share some of the stuff with the clients that I've been working with um, and educate you on why it's important to make sure you have good blood sugar control symptoms and causes of low and high blood sugar. And then also some very easy natural lifestyle changes that you can make to help improve it so that you can feel better, have more energy and just maintain overall health because that's what it's all about. So welcome. Welcome to the podcast. If this is your first time, uh, congratulations. You found it. The place to be. No, I'm just kidding. I do want to get in. I always like acknowledging all the messages and the feedback that you guys give me. Um, thank you so much. For those of you who personally sent me messages on social media or even in emails, letting me know if you listen to one of the podcast episodes, how much you enjoyed it or how much it hit home. That never gets old to me. Like I literally like screenshot those messages when you guys give them to me because I keep them as like a source of encouragement, but also as a source of inspiration and motivation and drive, because it lets me know that the content that I'm sharing is actually helping you in your life. So to every single person who sent in those messages, thank you so much. And to those of you who share screenshot and share it on social media. Thank you. It makes my day when you do that. I appreciate that. I did get some requests for podcast episodes. So I have a list of them. Some of those coming up or I got some requests on nutrition timing and figuring out how to time your nutrition, such as like what kind of macros should you be eating in the morning versus at night, what your pre and post workout nutrition should look at look like. And obviously like how to sustain weight loss as you start out on a nutrition plan. So we'll have a topic on that. I also got a request for a topic on adaptogens, which I'm super excited to talk about because I love adaptogens and adaptogens are specific herbs that can, it's exactly what it sounds like. It helps your body better adapt to stress. So we're going to get into some of those. Um, yeah. So those were the main things that I wanted to point out in that. So, all right. So experiencing your own blood sugar and figuring out, do you have high or low? Is it affecting your everyday life? Like 
if you don't have any idea of what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about energy crashes or like that jitteriness or that weak feeling, um, having a hard time concentrating, then your blood sugar is probably fine. But this is still helpful for you just to know why it's important to have good blood sugar. So what exactly is your blood sugar? Your blood sugar is literally the amount of glucose that is in your bloodstream. So where do we get glucose from? Our glucose comes from the food that we eat, and it is the main source of energy used in the body. So when you consume food, your body does its job to break it down and send it off to the different pathways that it needs to go in order to give you the vitamins, nutrients, macronutrients that it needs. Um, the process of this is we consume our food, it goes through our stomach, it's in our gut, it gets broken down, and then it starts to go through like our liver. Our liver is one of our detox pathways that takes up like vitamins and nutrients for detoxing and sending back into the body what it needs for your brain, for your hormones, for there's so many systems in the body. So it's for all the systems in the body. So that's what happens. You consume food, body breaks it down into glucose. It is used as energy in the body. It affects everything from a weight loss standpoint, um, because the main way that we lose weight is by taking, I mean, the reality is by taking less energy in than what we are burning, your energy being calories, calories are energy. However, you also experience weight loss when you have balanced blood sugar, and you don't have excess insulin running through your body. Getting excess insulin. So like to try and figure out how to explain this, basically like your body pumps out insulin. So the pancreas is pumping out insulin. It's sugar. It sends it through our bloodstream to be used as fuel and energy. When we have too much sugar in our body, because our pancreas is constantly pumping it out into our blood, our bloodstream, because we're consuming too much sugar, it will literally signal to our body, hey, we have plenty of insulin and glucose in our body, so we have plenty of energy, so there's no need to burn any fat, just store it away because we're pumping out plenty of that glucose throughout our body. So this is what happens when you have issues with high blood sugar and how it affects our weight loss. When you have high blood sugar, your body doesn't go to fat, to burn fat as energy. It literally has so much of it running through your bloodstream that it can just store excess fat because the insulin is giving it energy. Um, so from a mental standpoint, how it affects like our mood and our ability to concentrate and think clearly is people who struggle with high blood sugar, they tend to have issues with concentration. Um, they constantly struggle with feeling lethargic, feeling unwell. They're always tired, um, having low energy or having a lot of energy fluctuations. So when you have high blood sugar, it's that feeling of like constantly up and down. Like maybe you have like a ton of energy. It's like, I think of like a kid, the whole like joke with kids when they have sugar rushes and then they crash, it's because it's unsteady blood sugar. So it's the same thing with adults when like you have this like high because maybe you just ate a high carbohydrate meal. You then later are going to experience an energy crash because what it does is it spikes your blood sugar and then it drops it back down. So your pancreas pumps out all of this insulin in the bloodstream, and then it just like flat lines. So on the flip side of that, people who tend to struggle with low blood sugar, their symptoms are more of feelings of nervousness, anxiety, constantly hungry all the time. Uh, they get really irritable and impatient. Uh, they also have a hard time with energy, but it's not quite the same as like the energy highs and lows. It's just like this feeling of like, God, I can't even think straight. Um, people, a lot of this comes from under eating or just not eating in a way that can, can maintain steady blood sugar levels throughout the day. And typically like one of the things that happens, in, and this is the thing that I struggle with is if you tend to have low blood sugar, 
if you drop too low in your insulin or you drop too low in not having enough food throughout the day, you get hypoglycemic at night when you go to sleep. And how this kind of like feels is maybe you try to go to sleep and then all of a sudden you're getting really bad anxiety or adrenaline rushes, or you have a hard time falling asleep and you're tossing and turning and waking up and sweating and all these things. It's because your body does this um, to basically like it. I mean, again, the body's intuitive, but basically your body does this to wake you up to wake you up with like, Hey, we need more food. Your blood sugar is dropping way too low. So it will cause a stress response and it can signal adrenaline through the body to get the heart rate up, get the, um, the energy back up. And basically it's trying to help you out and save you because there's not enough insulin or energy in the body. So that's on the low blood sugar side. And actually a lot of times athletes and very or highly active people, people that are always on the go, they can have some of the biggest issues with struggling with low blood sugar, just because like your body is constantly using up your insulin stores. You're not like oversupplied in glucose and insulin because you're doing HIIT workouts, you're uh, on the go on all, all the time, thinking all the time, using your brain, like you're just on the go. So your body is making sure to use up those energy sources this actually story about this has actually happened to me the other day. So once a year I do just like I had clients do functional labs. I do my own functional labs. So the other day I was having my annual functional labs done. And in order to get the most accurate results, you do have to do them fasted so that you, way you can see what is your fasted insulin levels, fasted glucose levels. What is your cortisol like first thing in the morning? It's, we all know I'm not a fan of fasting for all the reasons explained in the previous episodes, but the earliest appointment that the labs had was 9.30 in the morning. Now, I wake up at like 6, 6.30. As soon as I wake up, like within 20 minutes, I'm eating breakfast because I'm so hungry and like my body just wants food. So for me to wake up at 6, 6.30, I can't eat until 9.30 and I'm now on a 12-hour fast. I was having to do so much like self-talk and mindset work because my patience was just not there. And I was so irritable and I was having to like drive in traffic and like, I could feel myself getting irritated that I was just like, Ashley, you know, it's just because you haven't eaten. Just relax. As soon as you get your lab results done, you can go eat as much as you want to eat. But that's the experience is low blood sugar creates that feeling of like anxiety, irritability, impatience, frustration, because your body is so hungry. Um, so on top of that, if somebody is dealing, like I was explaining, if somebody is dealing with low blood sugar because the body senses that there is a stress or a need for food because your blood sugar drops too low, it releases that hormone adrenaline to help the body recover from an episode of low blood sugar and I'm kind of like repeating myself, but the way this feels when this happens is you might have heightened sense of awareness, rapid heartbeat, dizziness, lightheadedness, uh, restlessness, and a nervous jittery sensation. So without repeating other episodes, obviously like having a stress response and adrenaline response is going to spike your cortisol levels. So when our cortisol levels are high, then it makes it even harder for us to control blood sugar and it just creates like a whole mess. So this is the reason why blood sugar is so important, not just from like a steady energy standpoint, but also from like just your overall stress levels, your health and well-being, be your health and well-being, uh, getting good sleep, having good performance in your workouts, but also keeping steady mental and physical energy throughout the day. So we're going to talk about this, like to give you some background on the hormone standpoint and how it affects this too. If somebody has high levels of insulin, so a woman, for example, if she has high fasting glucose or insulin levels, it can actually affect their ovaries because it ends up resulting in production of the hormone testosterone and it ends up being too much testosterone with higher levels of testosterone, women end up being more at risk for things like PCOS, PMS, acne, and all kinds of other female issues. 
having high blood sugar can raise testosterone in women, while on the flip side, for men, it can actually lower testosterone levels, causing things like low libido, obesity, sleep disturbances, or energy levels. So for both men and women, insulin production can inhibit the production of human growth hormone, which our HGH is responsible for maintaining lean muscle mass, body fat, and keeping our bones super healthy. So whether you have high blood sugar or low blood sugar, it is super important to maintain that healthy balance because it can affect your ability to maintain that lean muscle mass, keep good reproductive health, keep good energy levels, um, and yeah, keep you at risk for other things that's going on. Lastly, if you have high blood sugar, high blood sugar can also break down collagen. And as we know, collagen is like what we lose as we age. It like makes our skin look beautiful. It's also super important for our joints. Right now, it's like one of the biggest trends going on is everybody needs to get collagen protein, which I've been asked this recently, like what my pains are in collagen protein. Honestly, guys, you do not need more supplements. You do not need to go eat algae and collagen protein and buy every single supplement on the market. What you need is to eat more whole foods, healthy fats, complex carbohydrates, healthy protein sources, drink plenty of water and stay hydrated, meditate, exercise, and get good sleep. That's what you need. Anyways, going back to this. High blood sugar can cause breakdown of collagen. Um, it can also cause breakouts and skin issues, which overall, it can speed up the aging process. So now that you're kind of understanding a little bit of the high blood sugar, low blood sugar, how it affects our weight loss, how it affects our sleep and our overall moods and energies, the question then becomes like, what are the things that can cause issues with our blood sugar imbalance? Like how does it ever even get thrown off? So stress is a huge thing. Stress is obviously something that affects like every area of our life. So people who tend to be under greater amounts of stress tend to have less blood sugar control. I mean, that's just kind of from a holistic perspective, like anytime you're under high amounts of stress, it is going to raise cortisol levels. It is going to start to break down things in your body to keep up with the level of stress that you're going through. So stress is a huge thing. Alcohol is a huge thing with blood sugar control. I mean, alcohol, I always, when I work with clients, they ask me like, so what does alcohol count as in my macros? And I'm like, well, alcohol is basically like carbs and sugar. When you're consuming that though, like especially if you're doing large amounts of it, it totally throws off your blood sugar control because when you consume alcohol, even if you are consuming food, your body goes first to metabolizing the alcohol in the bloodstream, not to the food. So like there's so many things out there, people talking about like, well, you can fix this by consuming foods that are higher in protein with more carbs and fat than other people are saying, like if you eat first and then drink later. I mean, all of it is basic science. It pretty much like if you eat first and then you consume alcohol or whether you consume alcohol and then eat, your body is going to prioritize metabolizing and breaking down the alcohol before it starts metabolizing and breaking down the food. The reason this causes issues with blood sugar is because like I said, alcohol is carbs and sugar. So if that's all your body is doing is metabolizing and breaking down carbs and sugar, it's going to cause a huge insulin and blood sugar spike. And then you're also going to have a huge blood sugar drop. This is why sometimes if you have gone out drinking the next day, you might feel, you might get the shakes. You get the shakes, you get jitters, maybe you don't sleep that well. It's usually because you have low blood sugar or your blood sugar is just so out of whack from metabolizing all that alcohol. So stress, then we have alcohol. The other thing too is caffeine. High levels of caffeine intake, and I'm not talking like one cup of coffee a day. If you were consuming like three, four, five cups of coffee a day or three, four, five Red Bulls and Celsius and pre-workouts and all that stuff, high levels of caffeine can also throw off your blood sugar levels as well. There's a lot of reasons for this. I mean, caffeine is a little bit of an appetite suppressant, so you end up 
not eating as much food as you should be because that fuel and energy is being artificially replaced with high levels of caffeine. Problem with caffeine, too much of it causes spikes in cortisol and it also causes that release of adrenaline throughout the body. So keeping your caffeine in check is going to be really important too. Another thing that can disrupt blood sugar balance is eating too high of a carbohydrate diet. So if you consume just carbohydrates, it spikes your blood sugar. It instantly is going to spike your blood sugar. You always want to make sure if you're consuming carbs, you are consuming it with some sort of protein source as well. Protein does not spike our blood sugar and it actually helps keep our blood sugar levels stable and gives us that um, satisfied feeling whenever we're eating it. So a lot of times like the whole trend was like high carb, high protein, low fat can actually do a disservice because fat is also a really good important source for maintaining healthy blood sugar levels too. So consuming a diet that is too high in carbohydrates is going to cause a lot of issues with keeping steady energy. So it's the experience of, let's say like you eat a high carbohydrate breakfast and then you feel really good. And then mid morning, like three hours later, you start to kind of crash. So then you eat a high carbohydrate lunch But then right around like two or three, like you were just falling off and you're like, God, I have like more energy. I can't think. And then you go to dinner and then you're eating the same thing. And then like you're crashing again. It's because every time you eat these high carbohydrate meals. So like for when I say high carbohydrate meal, what I mean is like, let's just say hypothetically, let's say your breakfast is like 60 grams of carbs, five to seven grams of fat. And then like, 10 to 15 grams of protein. Your carb intake in proportion to your protein and fat intake is so much higher that it's not going to sustain you. It's not going to sustain you. You're going to get a big spike in insulin and energy, and then you're going to drop off. So typically, I like to have people, I always say you want to eat a balanced diet. That's the best way to go about doing things is balance is always going to create balance in the body. So making sure that your carbohydrate intake with your meals is not super high in comparison to the amount of protein and fat you're taking in. And I've had clients that I've worked with who are used to, okay, so I eat like this much protein and then I eat higher carbs and then I keep my fat around like 30 to 40 grams. Most of the time, the experience they have is they're not really losing much weight but also they can't seem to sustain their energy. They crash, they crash after lunch. And the reason I always refer to after lunch is because the natural rhythm of our body is our cortisol spikes in the morning. So from morning to about lunch, your body can tolerate carbs really well because having more carbs in the morning in the first half of your day is going to help keep your cortisol levels a little bit regulated. However, after lunch, naturally our cortisol levels start to kind of lower and taper off because as the day goes on, we're usually not as busy. So we don't need as high as high of levels of carbohydrates. So we don't need as high of levels of cortisol either. So people have been consuming all throughout the morning, like these high carbs and they feel really good. And then they're like, Oh my God, I have this whole energy crash. Well, it's because like, as the day wanes on, your body needs more protein and fats than it does carbohydrates. So when I'm working with a client and this usually happens and we start to look at like their pattern, will you play around with switching around their fat and carb intake and their macronutrient intake? And usually it results in having steady energy throughout the day and no longer having those energy crashes. Um, Also, a total side note, if you are consuming too high of a processed carbohydrate diet, you also will notice that you have more inflammation in the body. And so like, that's like the stiffness, the achiness, inflammation can also show up as like acne and skin issues, um, or like just difficulty concentrating. That's usually because like a high carb diet is associated with higher levels of inflammation as well. So So far, we've talked about like the things that disrupt your sugar balance are stress, alcohol, high caffeine intake, high carb diet, high processed diet. And the last thing that we'll touch on is skipping meals. 
So you heard me talk about this in the other episode about intermittent fasting and fasted cardio. When you're skipping meals, and so we don't repeat everything from last week, you can listen to last week's episode to go into this in more detail. When you're skipping meals, it is going to stress your body out. Going back to point number one, stress is one of the things that causes blood sugar disruption, but also it ends up either dropping your blood sugar too low, or when you do end up eating food again, it's going to spike it way too high because you're probably going to cons- over consume in carbohydrates because you're so hungry. Um, so all in all, like the best way to do this is to have regularly timed meals or eat regularly throughout the day with balanced macronutrients. So now that we got into this, how blood sugar manages every, or yeah, managing our blood sugar affects everything in our lives, how it gets disrupted through our lifestyle choices. The question is, how do we go about balancing it? How do we get back in balance? So if you're somebody that has high blood sugar, how do you get in like a good place of fasting insulin and fasting glucose? And if you're in somebody that, if you are somebody that struggles with low blood sugar, how do you get it so that it's maintained? So a couple of things, there's actually about six to seven things we're going to talk about here. Number one, nutrition. Nutrition, having balanced diet is going to be the biggest thing. Consuming large amounts of sugar is going to affect you. Now, here's the thing is almost every single time when I bring this up, somebody's like, well, I don't eat candy. I don't eat sweets. Like I don't consume a large amount of sugar. I'm sure you don't eat candy or sweets. I ensure generally in your mind, you are probably eating very healthy. However, sugar is found in a lot of other things other than just sweets and candy. A lot of dairy products are very high in sugar. So when people tell me that they're eating yogurt, even if it's Greek yogurt, I'm like, look at the sugar content. It's probably like 16 grams of sugar in one serving or they're consuming regular cow's milk, or even consuming things like oat milk. Look at the sugar. It's still going to be high in sugar. You got to switch to unsweetened. Look at the bread that you're eating. Bread has a lot of sugar in it too. Like There's a lot of things that you can be consuming on a regular basis that you don't necessarily identify as sugar, but it is full of sugar and the way that you're brought, your body breaks it down is sugar, even having carbohydrates. Carbohydrates gets broken down into glucose. Think about like the things you're drinking every day, your sports drinks, your fruit drinks. I think I've told this story before, but I had a client one time that we're working together and he's losing so much weight. And then all of a sudden he kind of plateaued, which wasn't really making sense because he still had like a good 30 to 40 pounds to lose. And I mean, I was like, dialed in on his nutrition. He was also training with me five days a week. So I knew the intensity in the training that he was doing. Then I was like, this is not making any sense. Like, are you sure you're eating exactly what I put on here? He's like, yeah, like I don't waver off of that at all. I'm like, all right, something's not right. If you're eating the exact way that I'm telling you to, and I see how you're training five days a week, there is something missing. So we were breaking down this day. I'm like, walk me through the day, every single thing. Like the water you're drinking, like the whatever you're doing after, like we need these workouts, talk to me about it. And we've gotten to the point where he was like, yeah. And then like on my way to work, I go to Starbucks and then like I eat the lunch, like you tell me to eat. And I'm like, okay, wait, hold up. What are you getting at Starbucks? And he's like, um, I just get a caramel latte. I'm like, what size caramel latte? And he's like, I get a grande or a venti. I was like, oh my God, that right there is like probably an additional like 600 calories and like 60 grams of sugar and like all kinds of crap. I was like, cut that out. And like, sure enough, like he cut it out and the weight started coming back down. But it's like, there's so many sneaky ways that you are probably over consuming sugar. And even in the type of foods that you're eating, there's different foods that are considered, there's high glycemic index and then there's low glycemic index foods. So all this means, and like now, unfortunately, like a lot of food companies are putting this on labels, letting you know if it's like low glycemic or it's low GI or high GI. High glycemic index means when you consume it, it will spike your blood sugar. Low glycemic means that it will have a minimal blood sugar response. So with your nutrition as well, you want to consume foods that are more in a low glycemic range. And honestly, Low glycemic, if you stick to whole foods, so whole foods being lean protein, 
complex carbohydrates, your complex carbohydrates coming from sources like vegetables, oats, sweet potatoes, legumes, uh, quinoa, low sugar fruit. So keep that in mind. Like everybody that's on this thing with like fruit smoothies and juicing and all that, you have no idea how much sugar like is in all of these things. So make sure the fruit that you are consuming is also in a low glycemic index, which is going to be more in your berries. So your blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, um, apples, unripe bananas. So ripened bananas are very high in sugar. Unripe bananas are going to be lower in sugar. So your nutrition is the first thing. You can look this up too. If you look up low glycemic index foods, high glycemic index foods, you'll see a long list from every single macronutrient from fruits, vegetables, carbs, uh, fats, and proteins of what will spike your blood sugar and what will not. So that's number one is your nutrition. On top of the nutrition, it's making sure that you are not skipping meals and that you are eating regularly throughout the day. Okay. The second way you can improve this is exercise. Regular exercise helps the body's insulin response because your muscles use glucose to provide energy to the body during exercise. One of the best types of exercise for blood sugar control is weightlifting and high intensity inter interval training because of the demand it places on the body that ends up helping with glucose metabolism. It also increases insulin sensitivity. So when you're doing high intensity, your body has to pump out insulin, but also you become more insulin sensitive instead of insulin resistant. So exercise is a huge thing and not steady state cardio. I mean, if you're going to exercise, any exercise is better than no exercise. But with what we're talking about here, both from like a weight loss, fat loss standpoint, but also maintaining blood sugar control is strength training, resistance training, and hit training. Those like fast interval intervals, those ups and downs of energy burst, those are going to be fantastic for blood sugar control and insulin sensitivity. So that's number two. Number three, hydration. Hydration is huge. Hydration is so important for like all of our functions in our body, but also staying hydrated throughout the day is super important with helping the kidneys flush out any excess insulin that you may have. So hydration, number one, nutrition, two, exercise, three, hydration. Are we shocked at how simple these things are? I feel like the answer to everything in life, everything in life, people are like, what's going on? I ask them like, what's the problem? Like what's going on? I'm like, okay, well, meditate, clean up your nutrition exercise, sleep, practice gratitude. Like it's always the same answer. So hydration is number three. Number four, can you imagine what number four could possibly be? Sleep. Getting enough sleep helps manage hormonal balance along with low rate stress and keeping cortisol levels in check. Now, not getting enough sleep is going to cause you to have higher cortisol levels along with increasing your appetite. Um, your body's going to be pumping out adrenaline a lot more for, without getting into like female hormones and all those things. Higher levels of estrogen are going to help with insulin sensitivity as well. Um, and then progesterone later on in the menstrual cycle ends up suppressing your body's ability to access carbohydrate sources. The reason I'm saying this and tying it all into sleep and cortisol is because when your cortisol gets higher, it throws off that progesterone estrogen, estrogen balance significantly, making it much harder for your body to maintain healthy blood sugar levels. This also goes for men too. The only difference is you guys don't have fluctuations throughout the month like this, but you still have all the hormones as well. Um, so that's number four is getting enough sleep. Number five, eat more protein, protein and healthy fats, protein and healthy fats do not cause high insulin spikes in the body and are an easy way to fuel the body with quality nutrients that are going to keep you satisfied as well. This does not mean I am not saying protein and fats as in like no carbs, cut out your carbs, because you guys know how I feel about that. Your body does need healthy, complex carbohydrates. It just means making sure you are getting adequate amounts of protein and fats throughout the day. In the other episode where I talked about figuring out your macronutrients, 
you can find out how much protein you need and what kind of fat numbers you need to be at a good level for your size and goal body weight. But eating more protein and fats is going to help with overall appetite and blood sugar control. Your healthy protein options are going to come from places like chicken breast, eggs, wild fish, whey and vegan protein powders, grass-fed beef, turkey breast, things like that. Cheese is not a source of good protein. And I have had to talk to so many clients about this because they don't really want to eat a lot of meat. And I understand that, but they'll eat a ton of cheese. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like there's nothing wrong with cheese, but cheese is not a good quality lead protein source. It also is dairy and has sugar. So cheese doesn't count. So then on the healthy fat side, some really good healthy fat options are avocados, olive oil, raw nuts, nut butters, avocado oil, coconut oil, grass-fed butter, ghee, things like that are going to be really good things that you can eat. And I mean, it's not that complicated. Like you can easily make a super healthy meal if you just take like a little bit of chicken breast, a little bit of avocado, and then dice up some sweet potato. And there you go. You got like a really good low glycemic meal that is also full of quality proteins, fats, um, and healthy complex carbohydrates. So that's number five, eat more protein and fats to maintain that blood sugar level. Number six, consider supplementing with magnesium. I tell every single person that I coach to use magnesium. I don't care if you are male or female. I don't care if you are perfectly healthy. Magnesium is probably like the number one choice of supplements that I tell people. And it's not because I don't really consider it a supplement. I consider magnesium kind of like salt, water, um, mostly because it's a mineral. It's a mineral that your body needs. Your body can't just produce magnesium. It has to get it from your food sources and from water sources. Uh, and it's super important, like in our society, because we don't have our soil levels and agriculture are not at the place that it used to be, which it used to be super rich in magnesium and potassium and our electrolytes that we need. It's not anymore. Uh, but also because magnesium gets depleted when we're stressed, we sweat it out, we pee it out. Like, it's just one of those things that like I always recommend using magnesium, not just for what we're talking about here, but magnesium is important for getting good sleep. Magnesium is important for muscle health, immune health, bone health. Magnesium is important for serotonin production. So number six is consider supplementing with magnesium because magnesium also helps stabilize blood sugar. And in a lot of studies, they have compared magnesium to metformin and even use it for people that are either like at risk for diabetes or struggle with PCOS because magnesium is just so good at helping stabilize us. So yeah, number six, consider using magnesium. The recommendation I would say is the most highly absorbed versions of magnesium are going to be magnesium citrate and magnesium glyconate. Magnesium citrate can be used in the morning. I will say be careful. Some people cannot tolerate tolerate magnesium citrate because it does, the way it works is it pulls water from the intestines. It's been used if people have issues with bowel movements, um, but it is highly absorbable. So just with the dosage on that, you want to work your way up and not just start with the highest dose. So it takes time for your body to build up tolerance, or you can use magnesium glyconate. So magnesium glyconate, I always recommend taking at night because it does have a calming kind of sleepy effect. So this number six is consider supplementing with magnesium. Number seven, as we were talking about, work on managing your stress levels. High levels of stress disrupt a number of functions in the body, including throwing off our appetite and our body's insulin response. So even if that means managing your stress is just spending five to 10 minutes a day in meditation or taking a walk or journaling, spending time out in nature, it doesn't really matter because anything you can do to help reduce your stress levels is going to help with overall blood sugar control and balance. So that's kind of the basics 
Um, blood sugar control. And I would say the main thing is if you start checking in and listening with listening to your body, which is the key to everything, you will start to figure out when you're having blood sugar spikes and blood sugar drops. If it happened, like pay attention to your workouts. And this can go into the whole like nutrition timing topic that we get into. But if you notice after your workout, like an hour later, you are just totally crashing. It is probably low blood sugar. And it's probably because your body used up all your glucose stores in the workout to get you through the workout. And this is why it's important post-workout, you're consuming solid protein and complex carbohydrates to replace those glut. Uh, not glycogen, well, glycogen glucose stores. Um, but you can also notice in the morning or throughout the day, start paying attention. Do you feel jittery? Are you having issues concentrating? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel like you have no energy? And the way you can test if this is your blood sugar or something else, consume a little bit of protein and fats and see how you feel after about 30 minutes. Are those symptoms kind of going away? Are you feeling a little more stabilized? If so, you're now learning your body's way of communicating to you that, hey, my blood sugar is a little bit off. Um, this is why it's important for you to also get lab work done and fasting insulin and glucose levels because you have several different markers that can indicate like healthy glucose levels, you have one that will show the three month store you have. So like if your three month store on your blood markers is super high, it's going to mean that you are consistently way too high in blood sugar, which is going to make it really hard for you to lose weight. And it also puts you at risk for diabetes along with other health problems. You then have a marker that will show your morning fasting insulin glucose levels, which we want them to be low. We don't want them to be like crazy low, but we do want them to be a little bit low because it's showing that you have a nice stable blood sugar level. Um, but yeah, on top of that, like you also want to test your cortisol to make sure your cortisol is in check. If you want help with all this and you want to work with me as your coach doing lab-based nutrition, dialing everything in so that you can really hit your goals, you can go to ashleydrummonds.com. There's links in the bio on things that you can click. You can set up a discovery call with me. We will talk all about that. But that basically sums it all up. Blood sugar control is super important. It is so important. And like, even, even with mood stuff, like that's why the whole Snickers commercial came out. Like you're not you when you're hangry it's because you get freaking low blood sugar and your brain is like, we do not have any energy sources and we need you to feed us. That's why it's angry. So use this as an opportunity to start to connect to your body more and figure out when do you need carbohydrates? When do you need fats? When is your body crashing? And how can you kind of reel that back in and stabilize it by adjusting your nutrition? Do you notice a difference when you consume alcohol? The next day, do you feel super shaky and weak and anxious and jittery? It's probably because of blood sugar. What about the caffeine? Start just paying attention to all these different things and playing around and you'll be able to not only help with your overall health, you'll help improve your labs and your blood work, but also you will see an improvement in your exercise performance, in your ability to maintain mental and physical energy throughout the day, even in your sleep. That's why magnesium is awesome at night because blood sugar and having a mineral that helps you sleep a little bit better. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, just in your overall health and well-being. So I hope this was super helpful. I hope you your head's not spinning right now and you have a pretty good understanding of why blood sugar is such an important factor. And yeah, thank you for joining me in this episode. Make sure you are subscribed. Oh, that's the other thing too. I send now every single week on Mondays, I send out an email with the latest episodes for you, letting you know like, hey, brand new episode came out. Feel free to go check it out. But I also, every now and then, will send out another email just with like more tips, uh, a lot of mindset stuff. I put a lot of the mindset stuff in the emails as well. So if you would like to be a part of that and start receiving the weekly newsletters that go out, when you go to the website at ashleygermans.com, there's a nice pretty little box right there in the middle that says, hey, would you like to get a double dose? Then go right ahead and put that in there and you will get all these weekly emails as they come out along with the latest podcast episodes. All right. Thank you so much for joining me in this week's 
Phoenix Rising podcast episode. And until next week, I hope you have a wonderful day and go create the life that you want. See you guys.